everybody. It is 3 p.m. on Tuesday, right? Tuesday. Uh, and that means it is time for Tap Talks. So welcome to Tap Talks. This is where we bring you some awesome arts creative people and to talk about their paths to creative uh, pursuits, especially for a teen audience. So we are so thrilled today. Um, oftentimes we are talking with um, professional adults about their paths to creative careers. And today we are so thrilled to be talking to a teen who is doing a ton uh, in the arts and so has just as much to share as any person who's been doing it for 20 years longer. So we are so thrilled um, for our talk today. And so this is Tap Talks. And if you're wondering what uh, Tap is, if you are find, found your way here for the first time, um, it, it stands for Teen Arts Pass, and we're a program of the arts education organization, Urban Gateways. And through TAP, anyone 13 to 19 has access to $5 tickets for performances all around Chicago. Of course, we all know there are no performances happening right now. So we figured out a way to try to stay engaged and uh, to try to continue these creative conversations. Um, so we are continuing TAP Talks every Tuesday and Thursday at 3 p.m. Central on Instagram Live, hashtag Quarantine Arts Pass. Um, easy way to remember is every day that starts with T, just like tap, and at the time that starts with T, 3 o'clock. So um, let me tell you a little bit about today's guest. Um, we're really lucky to be able to work with this young person on our TAP Teen Council. Uh, so Brandon Cheng is a junior at Walter Payton College Prep in Chicago's near north neighborhood, an avid cellist. Uh, he serves as a rotating principal with the Chicago Youth Symphony Orchestra's top level ensemble and is a scholarship fellow at the Academy uh, at the Music Institute of Chicago, where he is a member of the Dasani String Quartet. He strongly believes in the transformational and inspirational power of live arts performances, which is why he joined the TAP Teen Council in the fall of 2018. Along with a friend, he recently created the Swan Project, a collaboration of 24 cellists from 12 countries around the world. He also runs From a Teen's Perspective podcast, which offers teens from around the world a platform to share their passions, experiences, and stories. You can find episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and SoundCloud. So now I am going to welcome Brandon in as our guest today. Hi, Brandon. Well, hello. I'm so glad to be here. So oh, excited. Have you? Um, we are so thrilled. Um, so. We read your bio, I gushed about you a little bit, um, and I just want to give you the chance to kind of just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're involved in. Absolutely. So, of course, as Tara mentioned, I'm on the TAP Team Council, which has been so fun. It's been a great, we've watched shows together, we've gone throughout the city and checked out the various wonderful arts organizations around the city, whether it's theaters, you know other uh, operas, ballets, etc. It's been so great. That's one of the things I do. And also, um, as my bio showed, I'm also a cellist and I've played with CYSO, the Music Institute of Chicago, and also one of my previous music schools has been the Merritt School of Music. And with my cello playing, I do a lot of ensemble playing in orchestra and chamber music. And I also volunteer on Thursdays with actually a group that I started out with. Um, the intermediate program at the uh, Merritt School of Music, and now I volunteer with them, so it's kind of a way of giving back a little bit, I guess. Really awesome. Um, and that's that's fantastic that you found a way already to start giving back. You know, you're still in school. Um, I think there's a lot to be said about that. So, you know, being a teen, I'm already off the questions that I prepared in advance. I'm just going to talk to you. Um, so being a teen, what what is it for you that you think is so important about contributions teens can make to the arts? And, you know, how does that kind of contrast with the perception that you maybe have to wait until you're older to do things? Yeah, I think it's all about perspective. I mean, um, too often, if adults are the only ones giving perspectives, there, there are many adult perspectives from whether it's it's about gender, it's about sex, it's about race, any of those things. But at the same time, there's that perspective of age that isn't always so included. And so that's why I think teens must and should participate in any facet of life, whether that's the arts, whether that's the sciences, anything, because teens have a perspective that is just as unique as different types of adults might have. So that's why I believe teens should be 
constantly participating in the arts and creating and sharing their their views with the world. Well, we are very glad that you are so active and participating in the arts. Um, can you tell us a little bit about some of the projects you worked on, maybe what your favorite project or arts related thing that you've worked on or what you're most proud of? It's a big question. Yeah, so many projects that are that have been so fun to work on. I got to say, though, right now, the biggest thing, it's, it's pretty recent, too, because of the coronavirus quarantine. That's been the Swan Project, which you mentioned earlier. Um, I know I worked on this project with Cameron. I think he actually just joined. He, he might be watching right now. I'm not sure. Uh, I saw him pop up on the screen, but he's from Palatine, Illinois. I met him. He's also at the Music Institute of Chicago. And together we came up with this, this idea of, oh, he's waving right now. We came up with this idea of creating a collaboration of cellists from, you know, around the world. At first it started out with just the U.S. because we've been to music camps before. We know cellists from the U.S., but, and then Cameron's parents are musicians as well, and so they happen to know other musicians from other countries who also know younger musicians like us, and so then it turned into a big thing where it's it's now 24 cellists from 12 different countries. Looks like we have a little... I actually went off there. <laughs> I'm back now. Okay, I was... I never know if like I'm also frozen. So okay, so we're all we're back. We're back. Twenty four cellists from twenty four cellists, twelve countries, and then just this one beautiful piece, the Swan, which is um, it's just this gorgeous composition, really elegant, peaceful piece, and I think it's just a a perfect message right now, a real comforting message for the world because you know right now we're all stuck at home, we can't collaborate like we used to before, at least not physically in person. I think it's just a message that the arts and music can transcend these physical limitations and physical borders. Yeah, so how did you guys get that idea and why that piece of, like, what, who decided that piece of music? Yeah, so the, the idea was really like, oh, I want to collaborate somehow over this break, right? Because, you know, we're all stuck at home. I can't play in my orchestra and my chamber music ensembles. And then at the same time, Cameron and I are thinking, you know, why don't we reach out to some friends that we've made at music camps in the past, just connect with them right now, see how they're doing. And then that just became this this clashing of, well, not the clashing, but the coming together of these two ideas of, like, let's catch up with old friends, and at the same time, let's let's make this beautiful project. And the piece, I mean, if you're a cellist, you, you know the swan. The swan is, like, it's, like, cornerstone of the cello repertoire. I mean, it's so beautiful. Um, it's so recognizable, too. And then I think, I just think it's it's simple in a way that, Obviously, it's very beautiful, but simple so that it's not complex to understand. You don't have to feel like it's so above my level. You know, it's just bringing it right to you in a way. It is truly beautiful for anybody who has not uh, seen it. It's the Swan Project. If you search that on YouTube, you will see it. And Brandon is the one to kick it off. And um, with the on the cello, it is it is gorgeous. It really, um, really gives you chills and really does bring that calm serenity um, that I think is what you guys were kind of going for, a moment of peace and all of this. So congratulations on that. It has a hundred and how many thousand views right now? I checked uh, half an hour ago, 109,000 views. So it's it's really been going up there. Yo-Yo Ma actually reposted it on his Instagram story or in his Facebook story a couple of days ago. So that's super cool. I mean, I'm glad it's been as big as, as, it, as it was. That's incredible. Um, so as a cellist, uh, you have worked alongside professionals, is that correct, before? Yeah, I've played in a couple of side-by-sides with professional players. One of them was actually uh, with the Chicago uh, Sinfonietta, and that's actually who I did a partner profile on earlier through the TAP Team Council. They're one of our partners, so whenever we open up again, definitely check out their, their concerts. It's super great music and they did a side i did a side by side with them a couple years ago so uh what have you gained from being able to work alongside professionals uh they have so much experience it's amazing and the insider tricks they have like um you know if there's this one tricky passage i remember i was struggling a little bit with some counting and some rhythm issues at first but then my stand partner uh, mr don mead i think i if i remember correctly he was showing me you know try these tips to subdivide better to figure out the rhythm better to feel the rhythm in a in a more deep way and i think those tips are are things that you don't really get unless you're playing with a lot of 
I mean, you gain them over time through experience, but no better way to fast track it than to play alongside professional musicians. That's really great. That's awesome that you uh, had that, those opportunities. Um, do you have any particular role models? It doesn't have to be a cellist. It can be a cellist. It could be anybody, um, anybody that you are really inspired by. Oh, there's so many people that are just like inspirations. I mean, I don't, I don't even know where to start with that, but I think you have to look to, of course, every, every cellist inspiration in some ways, Yo-Yo because, Yo-Yo Ma, because of, you know, just his, his friendly nature and how, how warm he is to everyone. And also it's really one of, I should have mentioned earlier, one of the inspirations for the project is Yo-Yo Ma's. He started something called the Songs of Comfort where he plays a, a piece on his instrument that just puts you, you know, at ease in a way. So of course, that's one of my big musical and personal inspirations. Um, also, a lot of the teens I'm, I'm around every day on the teen council, for example, there's so many teens that are doing so many wonderful things. Those those people are all inspirations to me as well. So I think I can find inspiration from a lot of a lot of people I'm around. That's a really that's a really wonderful thing to be able to do to draw inspiration from everybody around you. And and I do appreciate you you mentioning that too because again the value that teens have you don't it doesn't always have to be an adult it doesn't always have to be somebody you don't have to wait to do big things to inspire other people to really you know make a difference and so i i really appreciate that um that's something that's not holding you up and and being able to share that message with other teens that you don't have to wait to to do amazing things um so this is a big question, but okay. why are the arts important to you? Oh boy, yeah, that is a big question. I mean, there's so many types of art. I mean, it's, it's just, but I think that's, that's also one of the reasons why the arts are so, so good because there's so many ways of expression and there's so many, there's really an infinite variety of ways to, to create and to express and to draw inspiration from. That's one of the reasons why the arts are so big but also so, um, so, so amazing for me, so inspirational for me. And I think in a lot of ways, arts can really cause an experience that, that's really just inspiring. Um, and sometimes, you know, science, everything is great in its own way, but then sometimes I get locked up in those technical nitty gritty details. And then you just need to take a step back and appreciate the world for what it is, the beauty in the world a little bit. And I think that's what the art does, whether it's through seeing this beautiful play that reminded you of something you experienced in your life or seeing like a really transformative concert that just made you made you feel some special type of way I think that's what the arts do they make you feel a type of way I think that's great yeah it it reminds me I remember talking to my sister after seeing a play one time and she's not in in, in the arts uh, the same way I am and she I asked her if she liked it and then I realized that's not the right question right it's it and because she her answer was I don't know if I liked it and I said, okay, well, why? It made her feel something, but that feeling wasn't just like happiness, right? And so the arts can make you feel so many different things. It might not always be good. And so that, that really reframed, like, never ask somebody if they liked something in the arts that they saw. Did it, did it make you feel something? Did, you, did it move you in some kind of way? That, like, you know, because I don't like things that make me cry, but they are impactful and beautiful. And, yeah, so I think that's a really beautiful way to look at it. Yeah, I love what you just said there. I mean, like some of the some of the most amazing and, and events that I've seen aren't necessarily the ones that make you go like just smiling all the time or just feel truly happy, but it's ones that like really make you think or see the world in a new way through that through that performance, whether it's like a play that really hits home in that one thing that you haven't thought about before, or even a like like I was talking about earlier, like a powerful piece of music or some something like that that just makes you think in a new way, get that perspective going and get those mind that get the mind thinking a little bit that's really what arts the arts do yeah yeah kind of blowing up your perception of what there is in the world yeah um so do you have any like early arts related memories that you can think about like little brandon any any thoughts about early arts memories that you have wow um little memories wow so i was actually going through my photos the other day um you know now that I'm stuck at home, I have nothing better to do than scroll through my photos, I guess. And then I found some some tiny pictures of me me playing the cello. Those were always funny. I remember there's one of me. Um, so I I sit. I used to practice. 
I used to live in an apartment where there wasn't a lot of space. And I used to practice by sitting on the toilet, you know, like just w with a lid on, of course. <laughs> and then I was, I would just sit and practice on there. So this, there's this funny picture of me. Um, I think it's, it's not on my phone. I, I remember seeing that somewhere though, but there's this funny picture of me um, sitting on the toilet and like with terrible technique too. Oh my God, my, my arm position was terrible, but it was funny. It reminded me, you know, you start from so young and you just work on your craft and keep getting better and better. And then you look back and you say, wow, that's, those are the coolest memories. How old were you when you started playing? I was five years old when I started playing. So it's been 11 years now. And they make tiny cellos, I assume? Oh, yeah. I've seen some tiny ones that you couldn't mistake for a violin if you weren't a string player. Gosh. Um, that's amazing. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your podcast. Can you tell us about your podcast, maybe, and how it started? Absolutely. So, you know, it's funny because right now you're interviewing me, and I'm usually in the position where I'm interviewing someone else for the podcast. But really, I think a lot of the points that I've hit on earlier, which is like, it's all about getting perspective from a wide variety of people and drawing inspiration from teens around you. I think that's really the biggest reason why I started the podcast. The podcast is a way, it's called From a Teen's Perspective. You can find it on like SoundCloud, uh, Spotify, Apple. It's really about, like the name suggests, it's really about talking to teens that are doing interesting things that are really passionate about certain subjects and then gaining their perspective. Why is it that they like to do this? Why is it that they're spending so much time on this when they could be doing other things, et cetera? And so that's really what the podcast is all about. It's about getting that different perspective, unique perspective from a teen's point of view specifically. Um, how has it grown? How long has it been going on? How has it grown? Um, you know, how's it living? Yeah, so it's been going on for um, over a year now. We're, we're just episode uploaded episode 24 on this past Sunday. We go every every other week is we that's our posting schedule and it's been great we've been growing uh viewer numbers we're always looking to improve so but we've now expanded to three different platforms we're working on a website so and we're also hoping to reach out to more and more guests maybe of uh if you're interested i know there might be some teens watching this if you're interested in coming on the show feel feel free to you can send me a text or i guess send me an instagram dm i don't know how this stuff works but just feel free. We're always looking for guests to talk to, and we're always looking for ways to reach out to more audiences and more teens. Awesome. Um, and what do you hope that ultimately the podcast does for teens? I hope that it's just a way for other teens to listen to and just find something that they can relate to in some way, whether it's the topic that they're relating to, or maybe it's a totally different topic. Like maybe you're interested in the sciences and I'm, I'm having someone talk about the theater, for example. Maybe it's not necessarily something that that you're particularly interested in, but maybe you'll find a new interest because of the way that a teen, a passionate teen, is really talking about that that area of interest. So I think that's what I hope the podcast will eventually do. Awesome. Um, for those of you who are just joining us, this is Tap Talks Teen Arts Pass, talking with Brandon Chang, a high school junior and cellist, podcast host, uh, co-creator of the Swan Project. Uh, all around awesome individual. Yeah, your, your title has a lot. That's of too kind. <laughs> um, so just, I'm gonna break it up with just something, just to get to know you, totally silly. Um, it's an either or series. So I'll give you two options. Sure. So uh, this one particularly feels relevant to many people right now. Uh, Netflix or Hulu? Ooh, I think, I think I'll go with Netflix here. I mean, to be honest, I don't watch too much TV, but when, I, when I've seen shows on Netflix, I've always liked them. So Netflix. Are you still on Stranger Things? Is that I we finished Stranger Things. Actually, we we binged the last my family, my entire family, we binged the last seven episodes of season three all in one sitting. It was crazy. Wow. So we're I, we're unfortunately done with that now. We're looking forward to season four though, whenever it comes out. A good family bond right there, shared experience. Oh yeah. Coffee or tea. Um, I think tea. I'm, I'm actually not big of a coffee drinker, and sometimes a soothing cup of tea is, is the way to go for me. Sounds nice. I even right? rhymes there. I could be a poet. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, deep dish or thin crust? Wow, these 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 questions are hard. Wow. Um, yeah, I think it kind of depends on the day for me, 
But right now, um, I think I'm craving some of that Lou Malati's deep dish. I mean, or wherever you guys like to get your deep dish pizza. I mean, I don't want to start any any pizza wars in the in the comments or anything, but I think some deep dishes is what I'm feeling right now. That's about right. Um, would you rather have the ability to fly or to read minds? I think to fly personally. Um, if I really had like a really wanted a superpower that wasn't too you know crazy, it'd be to teleport so I could save myself a lot of time and just just kind of mess with people by teleporting behind them or whatever. But um, reading people's minds, you know, that never really appealed to me. I think that's it would be kind of cool, I guess, to know what other people are thinking. But also, I feel I feel like people should should have should be able to to keep their own thoughts to themselves. I think I think that's pretty important. Yeah, this one's this one's a uh, pretty straightforward. Summer or winter? Summer, summer. I used to be winter when I was a kid, but now I don't like the cold so much anymore. And I'm I'm really looking forward to hopefully going back outside when this is all done. So summer for sure. Cake or pie? Um, depends. I think right now some pie would be nice. Comedy or drama? I think drama actually. Drama a little bit. I mean. Comedy is always great, and I, I definitely need. Oh, we lost you for a second. Again, <laughs> every 15 <laughs> minutes, that's when it goes. Um, okay, uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up with the book or the movie. Mm. I know I should say book because I do like reading a lot, but movies, sometimes good movies can, can have the same effect as a really good book. So I think I'm going to go with both here. How about that? I'll be diplomatic. That's fine. Um, well, thank you for participating in my silly either or series of questions. Loved it. Loved it. Um, back to the real, the real meaty stuff. Um, right now, what is your dream career? What are you thinking about? Mm, dream career. I something I enjoy a lot is uh, is teaching. Actually, maybe it would be nice to be like a, a teacher of of the cello in the future. I think that would be great because. You know, I gather a lot of perspectives from the podcasting and from people I meet, and I'd like to be able to share those perspectives in a way. That's why the podcast is great, but also on a one-on-one -on -one level, somehow teaching and mentoring other people would be something that I'm, I'm looking forward to. I have no doubt that you would be phenomenal at that. Um, um, so th this might feel a little weird, but what to what would you maybe attribute the success that you've had thus far? Oh, wow. Th I mean... Success. I'm still looking forward for that uh, continued success. I guess it's just. I think I just have to credit all the people around me for the for the help that they've given me. I'm all about like people supporting each other, and I think that's definitely been a big part of my life. Whether it's it's from mentors or adults that are older from you, like Tara and Lisa on the Teen Council, they've been always giving good advice, etc. Or also, you know, just the teens, the fellow teens in the Teen Council have always provided, you know great messages of support to each other. So I think in general, it's just the people who have always been supportive, have always been encouraging, and have really inspired me to keep working at what I want to do. That's awesome. Um, so just a little, what are you doing with all the extra time at home you have these days? Yeah, I'm getting some uh, good time to practice, and then also sleep is, the, is the, honestly the biggest one. I don't get to sleep too much during the, when when we have physical school but now that we're doing remote learning that's cut down the number of time number of hours that we're in school and so getting some nice sleep is has been very rewarding yeah that's a good perk that is it's good to appreciate that too and enjoy all the extra sleep um this question came from the brilliant mind of Lisa. Uh, for those of you who don't know Lisa, she's the Teen Arts Pass coordinator and also works with the Teen Council. But she asked if you have any favorite composers or compositions or works. Um, and then there's a sub-question, but I'll let you answer that one first. Okay. That's that's a pretty tricky one right there already. So, hmm, favorite, favorite composer? I think right now it's uh, Johannes Brahms. He has created some just great music. I mean, um, if I guess I had to describe his composition style, it's pretty like economic in a way. Like it's ne it's not never feels like it's too much, but also feels just right. And I think that balance is something that really is is just really cool that I I really identify with. 
Oh, and the other question was favorite composition, right? Ooh. Yeah, if you have one. Yeah. That would, I mean, there's so many different types of like composition for orchestra, for for chamber music, for solo stuff. I mean, right now I've been listening a lot to uh, the men, the Saint Saw, not um, the Saint Saw, the Organ Symphony Number no. Three. I almost got the numbers mixed up. Saint Saw, the Organ Symphony. We got to play it at Orchestra Hall actually with CYSO this um, this past year before everything got canceled. And so it was just beautiful. It's called the Organ Symphony because there's this part where the organ comes in and there's just these beautiful chords. If you haven't seen it yet, listen to it on YouTube or Spotify or something like that. It's beautiful. You just want to check it out. That's a really great segue to the next little iteration of this question, which is if for somebody who is maybe not an avid classical listener, um, what would you recommend for maybe a newcomer? A newcomer is like an intro to classical piece or, or composer. Yeah, I think you want to start off with uh, little little pieces, I guess, that are that are more bite sized. I mean, it can be pretty intimidating to feel like, oh, most of the piece, most of the songs I listen to right now are like four or five minutes. How am I going to sit through like a forty five minute piece? And I think the best way to do that is to just really sit through. You don't have to feel pressured to like say I have to like these big pieces right away. Just picking out some bite sized pieces or like small si parts of of whole symphonies for example that's just the way to go so whether that's like a a five minute piano just solo piano playing or a five minute movement of a string quartet or something like that just small and bite-sized as you get into it is the best way good advice um so if anybody in uh who's watching right now has any questions feel free to add them in the comments um otherwise i've got one kind of major final question to ask um is what message do you want to send to future Brandon? From teen Brandon to adult Brandon, what do you want to remind yourself of? Hmm, remind myself of, oof. So many things, I mean, ah, I think just, just in a way, just remember to to always be open. I mean, I think as, as we grow older, um, sometimes it can feel like we become more and more close to the thoughts and ideas of other people around us and i think that's that's a big cause for why there's sometimes a lot of tension um between various people in society today um sorry to make it so big all of a sudden but i think i think just keeping open an open mind and making sure that other people have you know really different ideas from you but at the same time can really add so much if you listen to those ideas and keeping open is, is something that's really important for me I think that's really, that's a great thing to remind all of us, all of us of any age. Um, so thank you so much. Brandon, is there anything else you want to share just kind of with other teens who are tuning in? Anything that you just want to leave us with? Any Brandon wisdom? Yeah, for the teens, I know a couple of my classmates have come and uh, joined in a couple of times throughout this. If you haven't heard about TAP, which I've got on my shirt right here, Teen Arts Pass, it's this wonderful program that you just have to go on the website, um, teenartspass.org, I think. And it's just this wonderful program where you get to uh, sign up for f totally free, and then you get to see shows from a lot of Chicago's best arts venues are around the Chicago area for just $5. So it's just an, been an amazing program. We've seen some really fantastic things through, through the TAP uh, organization, and I highly recommend you sign up whenever this quarantine stuff ends so that we can go see shows together. And feel free, that's, thank you, Brandon. Um, and feel free to sign up now because we also are sending emails still about things, ways you can stay engaged. Um, online performances that are, um, some of our partners have streaming, resources, things to do, things to see, things to watch. And of course, our tap talks that are happening every Tuesday and Thursday on Instagram Live at 3 p.m. So we are trying to keep engaged the best that we can. We do miss being able to go to live performances, but obviously being safe is the most important thing for all of us right now. And so we'll be sad about missing them, but there are just, a, there are so many opportunities that are available to us right now, um, thanks to um, a lot of the partner organizations, a lot of the arts organizations out there. So um, sign up for TAP and we'll keep you in the loop about all the things we hear about. We get all of our partners sending really cool resources, um, different things they're all doing. Um, but Brandon, Thank you so much. Um, as for those of you who weren't here at the beginning, Brandon is the first uh, team guest of Tap Talks. Um, we couldn't think of anybody uh, better with a 
more unique perspective uh, to share. Um, and with all of his work with the uh, Check Out the Swan Project and From a Teen's Perspective podcast. Um, and you're, yeah, it is an honor to be able to work with you um, now the second year in a row. And um, we're all we're all looking forward to being able to say we knew you when. So um, mm. thank you, Brandon. Thank you so much. I'm going to kick you out while I just do my little outro. But All right. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a real honor just to be on here and then just to, to be able to chat with you about so many things that are interesting to me. And I hope people listening find interesting as well. So thanks so much. Thank you for everything you've shared. You've got a lot of a lot of fantastic wisdom to share with teens, and I really, really appreciate your time and your energy and your wisdom. Thank you. So for everybody else, as Brandon waves goodbye, um, just wanted to remind everybody else that if you didn't catch all of today or if you um, wanted to share this with a friend, we will be posting all of our tap talks on YouTube uh, shortly on the Teen Arts Pass YouTube channel. So make sure that you are following us on Instagram um, so that we can uh, post there once we have everything gone live. And we are super excited. Um, this is actually the unofficial teen week of tap talks because on Thursday, we will be joined by Ada Gray, who is a teen actor and theater critic. Um, and so we are really thrilled to be continuing this fantastic energy from young people in the uh, Chicago arts community. So please be sure to tune in or keep an eye on your Instagram on Thursday at 3 p.m. as well. And we're working on a phenomenal lineup um, of future um, uh, Tap Talks guests um, and being interviewed by some of our team council members as well. So thank you so much for joining us again. This is Tap Talks from Urban Gateways and Teen Arts Pass. And uh, have a fantastic day. Everybody stay safe and we will see you on Thursday. Thanks so much.